Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, First Baptist Internet Church. Uh, good morning, all y'all here with me today. Uh, we're glad to have you all. If you don't know, and you haven't been tuned in, we've been going through a study in Revelation. Um, there is just one revelation uh, from God, and it's here before us. It was inspired uh, and given to John here. And um, it has been rather heavy, to say the least. In the past couple of chapters, we've seen uh, over well over half the world's population dead from demonic uh, beings released from the pits of hell uh, out upon the earth. <coughs> and uh, before we get in here to uh, chapter 10, I, I want to read the last verse of chapter 9 to you this morning. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So all, all the plagues, all the divine judgment, listen to me, this did not come from Satan. This judgment is a righteous judgment from God, his, God himself. Don't you get wrapped up and confused on where this came from. The only reason you're not being attacked today is God's hand of protection is upon you. Get it right today. This, this is a demonic plague released by God. When you say, Brother Mark, God's holy and all love. Amen, he is. But he's also pure justice. And how long do you think that people, you and I, can pray to God for justice, for things that are done wrong to our loved ones, before he responds? He's responding. He's going to respond in this time. But you got to see the point here, and the point is they did not repent. He's even in this day, up to this point, giving these folks a chance to what? Turn away, to repent. We have got to get that today. You know, I see so many people say, gosh, I want to know who God is. That's a catchphrase. They really don't want to know. Uh, God's extending his hand of mercy to you every single day. I know we give the invitation up here every Sunday. Um, and we talk about coming to know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. We do it every Sunday. People are not willing to repent. They're not willing to give up the fornication, the sorceries, the thefts, the murders. Uh, they just don't want to give it up. Man in his fallen state is totally depraved. I believe that. Until God intervenes, you, you are in seriously bad shape. And here... After all the earthquakes, after all the plagues, after all the demon, demons that have packed them out of hell and killed over half, well over half of the world's population. Now think about that number. Well over half. They are still unwilling to what? Unwilling to repent, to stop it. They're unwilling to stop killing. They're unwilling to stop murdering. They're unwilling to do any of that. Which brings us in here to chapter 10. And we're going to look at the whole chapter this morning, about 11 verses. So if you've got your uh, place there in the Word of God this morning, I'd invite you to stand with me wherever you are in the honor of the reading of God's Word. And if you're out there on the Internet Church, yeah, I'm talking to you. Stand up. <laughs> and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun. And his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open. And set his right foot upon the sea. And his left foot on the earth. And cried with a loud voice. As when a lion roareth. And then he. And when he had cried seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up these things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are therein and are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be 
time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God shall be finished. As he hath declared to his servants, the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel, and he said, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took a little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kingdoms. Y'all pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to be in your house. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to open up your word and just to glean a small sight of what you have in store. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for its instructional value. And Lord, we just thank you uh, for allowing us to be able to read uh, some of the things that are in your mind. Lord, we just praise you and we thank you for this. And we pray that you would open every ear within the sound of our voice and let them hear your word truly proclaimed this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all can be seated. So uh, here in verse, chapter 10, verse 1, I want you to pay attention to the first part of the verse there. And I saw another mighty angel. Now, there has been, and I know there is a little controversy, but don't get caught up in controversy, folks. Just let the gospel present itself. That's what it's designed to do. God doesn't keep it a secret from you. Uh, if you're his child, he has put enough light in every man's heart to hear God. Okay, he has. So just don't get caught up in it. Uh, there is a little controversy. People want to say this is Christ. I'm going to prove to you today that it is not Christ. I saw another. Another what? Okay, all we saw so far is mighty angels, right? It's an angel. I'll prove it more to you as we go here. Come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud and a rainbow upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. Well, you know, people say immediately, well, his face shined as the sun. Y'all remember when Moses got the Ten Commandments? Back in the Old Testament. Remember? What did his face do? His countenance changed. It shined. He was in the presence of God Almighty. Uh, it will change the person. It will change you. This study, whether you believe it or not, has changed you. It's even it's either driven you closer to Jesus Christ and God, or it has drove, driven you farther away. I pray the first is true and not the latter. It's going to do something. God's word will have an effect on you. God's word has an effect on everything and everyone around him. This angel had been with God and his face shone. It, it not only shined, it was as it were the sun. I mean, it was bright. Uh, there was no doubt who this mighty angel was. Look here. And he had, um, excuse me. His face were as the sun and his feet were as pillars of fire. Well, look, this is all the angels. This angel is a special envoy, okay? He is bringing, a, he's, there's an intermission going on right here. And he's bringing the intermission in before uh, the rest of Revelation gets played out. Uh, there's just a small window of time here. The world has not repented. What has he done? He's bringing more of the revelation of God here to bear. Not only that, he sets his feet on what? On the sea and on the earth. Look, there's only one person that is worthy. We studied it back in chapter 6. Who's worthy to take the take the seal out of God's hand. Who? Jesus only, right? Jesus only has title and deed to the earth. Jesus only. He owns everything in it. He created everything in it to start with. John 1.1. 1, 1. Y'all, uh, yeah, yeah, let's read John 1.1. 1, 1. We've got time, I'm sure. In the, in the beginning was the Word. Y'all know who the Word is, right? You with me? 
Jesus, the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <laughs> you just get down there. Uh, uh, the same was in the beginning, uh, was with God. In verse 3, all things were made by who? Him. And without Him, not anything made that was made. In Him was life and life. Life and was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. The darkness comprehended it not. Talking about when He was here. Men comprehended Him not as being God's Son. Listen, there's nothing that you have seen or ever will see that was not made by Jesus Christ uh, here on this earth. Uh, he made the whole earth. He made you. Uh, he made the air that you sit here and breathe this morning. He made the trees. If you're sitting down uh, and you're sitting in uh, a piece of wood, he made the trees that you're sitting on this morning. He made the metal. If you're sitting in a metal bench, we could go on and on about what he made, and we could probably never get to the end of it, nor will we ever get tired of talking about all the things Jesus Christ made. Uh, but he made you, and he also made a way for you to accept uh, him as your personal Savior and put you in a right relationship with God. He made these things. Uh, look, we could talk a lot about the mighty maker. I promise you, we could stand here and glorify him all day long and would not be spending a day amiss. But what we're talking about here is the angel. And his feet are on uh, the sea and his feet are on the earth. But look at it. Look how massive of an angel this is. His feet is on the earth and it's on the sea. He's got to be huge. In verse 3, he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voice. Listen, when this angel speaks, it's going to be a sound like you've never, ever heard, but everyone's going to hear it. It's going to be a mighty, mighty noise. Now, I think uh, the earth has changed. Uh, she is not the same as you're enjoying now. The earth is, uh, has been through massive earthquakes, massive meteor strikes. Look, there is nothing even resembling the life that you lead today. And I know you say, well, Brother Mark, COVID has just disrupted my life. No, ma'am. COVID has not disrupted anything. Uh, because this is a disruption. A uh, billion people dead, uh, earthquakes moving mountains into the sea, uh, meteor strikes, uh, half the world, two-thirds of the world water supply dead. Uh, most of the creatures in the sea dead by now? No. No, this is uh, nothing like COVID. No. This is far, far worse. And um, there's a lot of doom here. Uh, but again, how long do you expect God to put up with the unrepentance of man? Okay, in nine, or it's clear, neither repented they. They did not repent. Uh, they did not come, even after all the disasters, they did not come to a place in their life where they knew they needed to turn, and they knew they needed God. They have not come there. Uh, and I know a lot of us, uh, when we get saved, we're at the very, very, you know, we are knocked so far off our feet. We have nowhere else to turn other than God. Some of us, not so much. Uh, but some people have to get utterly knocked off their feet. And if you think these people weren't knocked off their feet, I don't know what it would take. Asteroid hit. Uh, over two-thirds of the world's population is dead. Uh, creatures in the sea are dead. Uh, you can't drink a lot of the water in the earth. Um, famine is everywhere. Uh, demons have attacked in hordes. Uh, I mean, just a re just a slight recap of what has happened to this point. I mean, it, it's bad. But these people, what? They repented not. They were hard-hearted. Uh, we got so many people hard-hearted today, I promise you. You know, you might say to Mark, you might say, Brother Mark, I don't believe in God. I don't care. Uh, I don't care in one respect. I don't care if you believe in him or not. He's going to judge you. You're going to stand before him. Whether you believe him or not is not a factor. It's a factor on whether or not you're going to heaven or hell. But it is not a factor of whether God is going to stand in judgment of you. He will. Uh, it's not an option. Uh, he created you. He has every right in the world to judge you. Uh, he created this nation we live in here in America. He has every right in the world to judge it. Uh, he judged Israel, right? 
uh, Pastor America needs to be clear and clean. And I'm getting off subject here a little bit, but I promise you, he has the right to judge this nation. He judged Israel. He has chosen people. He judged it. So, uh, you know, when it comes to the affairs of this nation, we need to be clear and clean. They need to align with God's plan. We need to align uh, with what he says. I know we're not perfect, and God knows we're not perfect. You're not fooling him. He knows your heart. But uh, our views uh, need to align with the word of God here in this nation because he will judge it. Here in verse 4, okay, verse 3, uh, seven thunders uttered their voices. All right, we've all heard thunder. Anybody here hasn't heard thunder? Y'all send me a text message on the internet if you haven't heard thunder. Everyone I know has heard thunder. Have you ever heard a voice in thunder? An intelligent voice in thunder? Well, guess what? Right here before your very eyes, in verse 3, thunders uttered their voices. Seven thunders. Complete thunder. Seven is always the number of completeness in the Bible. Seven. Seven thunders uttered their voices. This, these voices were intelligible. Uh, John knew exactly what they said. Well, Brother Mark, why do you say that? What's he getting ready to do here? When the seven thunders held their, uttered their voices, I was about to write. So you would agree with me that he knew exactly what the seven thunders said. Amen. He did. It's clear. I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Now this is a great point here in four. Uh, we need to get our head wrapped around. Nothing in, in Revelation uh, is hidden except this verse, what the seven thunders said. Now, I, I know and I've read commentations, uh, commentaries and, uh, from different people that say they know what those thundering said, I do not. It is a secret. And if you want my opinion on why, uh, I don't think you really need one. If God didn't write it down, you really don't need to know it. But I think they're so horrible with the seven bowls that's getting ready to happen. Uh, this is an intermission again. Uh, and I'm not talking about going to get popcorn. This is an intermission in these terrible, terrible plagues that have happened to the earth. And all this judgment that's occurring but there's seven bowls that's getting ready to be poured out in the next few chapters. We need to understand uh, if the seven thundering voices were talking about those, they would be way too much for you and I to bear. Uh, you know, uh, time is shortened then. Uh, Jesus tells us in other chapters that if it wasn't, uh, the elect wouldn't even survive. Uh, so if you think it's bad now, it's not bad. This is a great day. This is another day in the sun. Uh, here, here, this is awful. And the angel, <clears throat> excuse me here, I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up these things which the seven thunders of and write them not. So John is giving the instructions. I think he's giving the instructions from Jesus himself. I think Jesus is on the throne. I think Jesus has the title and deed to the, to the, uh, to the entire world. I think he earned it. He, I know he earned it. He already bought and paid for it in blood. Uh, he owns everything in it. I think Jesus is on the throne here this morning and he told John not to write it. And John did something that you and I don't do very often. We're obedient to our Lord and Savior. John was obedient. He did not write it, did he? He sealed them up. Angel, but I saw five, and the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lift up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven, and the things therein, and the earth and the things that are therein, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. Okay, let's get to the second reason. I don't think this is genius. And I can prove it to you here. Who, who's this angel swearing to? Now, if it was God, uh, he told Abraham, he couldn't swear by anybody else. There was none greater than him. Jesus and God are the same. Jesus would just have to swear by himself. But what did the angel do? Who did the angel swear to here? Let me read it again here. <clears throat> so he, he lifted up his hand to heaven, and he swore, right? 
by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven. And who was that that created heaven back in John 1 and earth? Who was that? Was that the word? Oh, I think y'all are getting it. So clearly this is not Jesus. Would you agree? You don't have to agree with me. Send me a text message. If you don't agree, it's cool. We'll debate. Uh, but clearly, uh, if this were Jesus, he would swear by himself. He, he, there is no greater. Uh, him and the Father are one. Uh, he would swear by himself, clearly. So this is an angel. Again, I saw another back in verse 1. Mighty angel. I think we need to take the Bible here literally. I don't think we need to take it figuratively. When John says an angel, I think it was an angel. Right. Now, he was clothed in, in all kinds of awesome clothing. Uh, that is true. Uh, but again, I think we can put that to bed. I think Jesus is still on the throne in heaven at this time, orchestrating the judgments that are going to happen to earth. He is the one that is worthy. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Okay, what's he talking about there in the seven? When this angel finally sounds his trumpet, he hasn't sounded it. Again, we're in the interlude. We're in the time just before the seven bowls of wrath are poured out. All the mysteries are going to be solved, especially about the seven um, thunderings that come out of the voices. It was all about those bowls of wrath that are getting ready to, to come upon an unrepentant earth, a sinful man that will not change his direction. He has hardened his heart to the point that he cannot and will not accept God. Now, there's a remnant of Christians there. Uh, remember, the greatest evangelistic outreach that ever has happened, happened a couple chapters ago, uh, and it came from Israel, and those men reached a lot of people. So there are people, there are elect going through this time. Uh, we will not be there. We'll be, in my opinion, out of here before this ever happens. <clears throat> we'll already be there, but uh, this uh, this time is is a time unlike any any you've ever even had a nightmare about. <clears throat> um, so the uh, mysteries of the mysteries of God will be revealed here, and we're over halfway through uh, the tribulation period. Um, most estimates of that estimated about seven years long, okay? And it started out kind of uh, not drastic, and then it got very, very drastic, okay? And then this is an intermission kind of, when things are kind of mostly stable after the uh, demon hordes attack and all the, all the demons that are loose on the earth, okay? And the voice spake unto me again and said, Go, take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel and standeth upon the sea, which standeth upon the sea and on the earth. So another reason, you know, John, uh, John's instructed here uh, to go and do what? He's, go, he's instructed to go and take the little book. Uh, okay, uh, the only book that Revelation ever talks about here is... Uh, is the book that Christ is only worthy to open, uh, that, that has the seven seals of judgment. And we're right here at the end of it, and John's instructed to what? Go take the book. So in uh, verse 9 here, he, he says, uh, he went to the angel, again, calling him an angel. And you'll remember back in chapter 1, uh, what did he do when he saw Jesus? Again, another point here. What did he do? He fell down and worshipped him. He's not worshipping this angel. This is an angel, folks. I went to the angel, verse 9, and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it. Eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, and it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Well, I'm going to flip the switch here just a little bit. Let's talk about the sweet as honey part first. You know why it's so sweet to John? Uh, he sees God restoring the earth back to the way he made it. 
back away from all sinful man's evilness. He sees uh, this earth <laughs> back like uh, God made it, uh, back without sin when he eats it. All right, well, when it gets down to his stomach and it's bitter, he sees the judgment on unrepentant man with these seven bowls that, that fall on man. I promise you, if you can be happy about that, and I know we as Christians, we, we pray every day, thy kingdom comes, I will be done. What's that saying? That means we want this earth to be the same as heaven, right? Thy kingdom comes, I will be done, right? That's what it means. That's what we're talking about here uh, when we pray for the kingdom to come. So uh, what, what John got a glimpse of was, yeah, it's sweet what God has in store for his the elect, for us, for the Christians, uh, is very sweet. It's very sweet to see what God will do with the earth. And John got a glimpse of that, but he also got a glimpse of something else. How terrible it's going to be for those vials to be poured out upon man. And some of your family and some of mine uh, would, would have to take that terrible judgment from a righteous God. Okay? Terrible judgment from a righteous God. Don't get confused here about who's in control. It's God. He's on the throne. Uh, he's in control of all the things that are going on. It's God in control here. And he is going to pour righteous judgment out on an unrepentant soul. And John sees that. And it's what makes him sick. It makes him it's bitter to his belly. You know, in Scripture, that's the way that, 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 that you feel when you realize that that judgment has come out. It's righteous, okay? It's deserved. Uh, we're not saying it's not deserved at all. It's deserved. God, uh, God needs to punish the wicked, okay? But John sees it, and it makes his stomach sick. And in uh, verse 11, And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy, prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. So it's John's recommissioning for a second time. Uh, John was one of the original 12 disciples, uh, the one who Jesus loved. Okay, and, and you know, he'd gone through massive things in his life. He's well enough in age, boiled in peanut oil. <laughs> and, uh, and didn't even, uh, it was a miracle. He'd come out unscathed. So then he was exiled to the Isle of Patmos, where he wrote, and was inspired to write Revelation. But here God's recommissioning, and he's telling him, no, you still have things to do. Uh, you've got to prophesy, you've got to preach, you've got to tell many uh, people and nations and tongues and kings. Who does that mean? It means he's got to get the word out to the entire world. Uh, so here John is recommissioned for a second time uh, to go out and to preach Revelation, okay? God's Revelation to the lost and fallen world around about. And it was fallen then, but it's much, much worse it's fallen now. We have a, a lot of people that um, don't know who God is and really, to be perfectly blunt with you this morning, they don't want to know him. But I promise you, there's coming a day, there's coming a day when every knee will bow and everyone will, con will confess Jesus Christ as Lord. You need to hear me. Let me be clear with you this morning. Uh, if you're not if you're not his servant, if you're if you're not his child, if you haven't made him Lord of your life, he's gonna look at you and say he's gonna say to you, "Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. I don't care if you're still in the pulpit or not. If you don't know who he is, if you don't know him, if you don't have that relationship with him, if you don't have that closeness with him, if you don't have Jesus as your Lord, you have absolutely nothing, and you're going to spend eternity in hell." It doesn't matter whether you think he has the right to judge you or not. I don't care if you think he has that right. He does. He made you. He has the right to judge you. Uh, who are you to tell the maker what to do with the product? Uh, and you are the product, and so am I. Uh, we, uh, we need to get that in our head. It doesn't matter if you agree with it or not. It's going to happen. Uh, not one word will pass away. Not one word. Not one jot. Not one tittle. Nothing. Uh, every period will be there. And you will stand. And you will confess him as Lord, whether you want to or not. It's not an option. And then you'll be judged. Uh, so today, uh, and I know uh, these are not salvation's message, salvation messages, but I promise you, they should be 
Uh, they should be a call to you personally. Uh, they should reach out and reach down deep in your soul because you're going to have family that live through this time. And, and you know, maybe if the heart wasn't so hard. And I pray that this morning. I pray this morning that he would, he would drive a pick right through the hardened heart of a man. And, and they would start to realize they need a Savior. Uh, they need someone to make the relationship with God right again. It's not right with you. Uh, if you're outside the will of God, uh, it's not right with you. Um, so take this day. Take this time uh, to, to come to the Lord. Uh, tell Jesus you need a Savior. Agree with God that you've sinned. And agree uh, with God that God did raise him on the third day. Ask Jesus into your life. Uh, ask him to be your Lord and Savior. The Lord part's important. Uh, you, you know, he's got to be your Lord. He can't really be your Savior now, can he? So, uh, and if you've made a commitment like that today and you're on the internet church, please let me know. Send me a text or some stuff I'd love to send you via uh, the mail or an email. Uh, anyway, let us know. We would love to get that information out to you. And um, why don't y'all stand with me this morning? We'll be dismissed in prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your will. Lord, we thank you that... Uh, we thank you that you've made us the instruments of your will. Uh, Lord, you've made it our responsibility to get your word out. And, Lord, uh, I know a lot of people don't take that seriously. We do here at First Baptist. Uh, Lord, we just pray that uh, that we would continue to do that, to continue to get your word out to this lost and dying world. You know, we know it's going to end badly. And, Lord, we just pray this day that you would uh, strengthen us so that we can get your word out to this lost and dying world about us. These things we pray in Jesus' name.